y'all, welcome back to our channel. Blair here with Lone Star Candle Supply, and today we're gonna to talk about all things wicks. So I'm gonna go over the different types of wicks that we carry, talk to you about how sizing works, and then we're gonna talk about using multiple wicks in a candle. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna to talk to you about are the different types of wicks that we carry. First, we have our Zinc Core Series wicks. Now these are a cotton braided wick that have a very thin zinc core filament that runs up the center of the wick. And what this filament does is it adds rigidity to the wick during the candle making process and as your wicks are burning. So it's going to keep your wick nice and straight um, as the candle burns. Uh, these wicks are coated in a paraffin wax and we recommend them uh, for use in paraffin. We have found that these wicks don't quite burn hot enough to burn up your natural waxes like soy. Next, we have the Eco Series wicks. Now, these wicks are a cotton braid, uh, but they have a paper filament that's woven into the braid. And that paper filament um, allows for a controlled curl, which makes the wicks virtually self trimming. One important thing to say when we're saying that these uh, wicks are self trimming, that doesn't mean that you still shouldn't make sure that you're properly trimming your wicks before you light to them. Um, you want to make sure that you're still doing that to make sure that you're burning your candles safely and you're also getting the best results. Um, the Eco Series wicks are also designed to minimize uh, mushrooming, soot, and smoke. They're going to be coated in a vegetable based wax. They're actually the only wick that we carry that's coated in a vegetable wax. Um, and these are going to be recommended for natural waxes like soy. We found that they burn uh, too hot for paraffin waxes, so for best results, use them in a natural wax. Then we have our CD series wicks. Now, similar to the Eco wicks, these are a, a cotton braid and they do have a paper filament. However, instead of the paper filament being woven into the braid, it's actually wrapped around the outside of the wick. Um, these wicks are also designed to be self trimming. They're gonna be coated in a paraffin wax and uh, you can use these in both your natural waxes and paraffin wax. I think a lot of candle makers like the CD series wicks because they are so versatile. Then we have the HTP wicks. Um, these are a cotton braided wick uh, that are designed to curl as they burning, again, to make them self trimming, similar to the Eco and the CD wicks. Um, and then these are also going to be coated in a paraffin wax and you can use them in both your natural waxes and paraffin wax. Next up, we have the LX wicks. Now these are going to be an all cotton braided wick. Um, they are designed to reduce uh, your mushrooming as well as the afterglow, which is that kind of glowing ember uh, effect whenever you extinguish your candle. It's also designed to minimize um, soot and smoke. Uh, these are gonna be coated in a paraffin wax and we recommend these mainly for paraffin waxes. Uh, again, they don't quite burn hot enough to properly burn up your natural waxes. Then we have our wooden wicks. Now these are obviously much different from the cotton wicks. Um, these are made out of two very thin pieces of wood that have been pressed together and then they're held together with an adhesive. Um, what's unique about these wicks is that they are designed to make a crackling sound as they're burning. So it kind of sounds like a fireplace burning in the distance. It creates a really nice ambiance whenever you're burning your candle. Uh, these are not coated in any sort of an oil or wax or anything like that. It's just going to be the wood itself. Um, and then these are recommended for use in both natural waxes and paraffin wax. We'll get into more of the, how the sizing and everything works a little bit later, but when you're looking at the sizing chart for the wooden wicks, there are two separate recommendations for your natural waxes and your single bore paraffins. Just an important thing to note. And then finally, we have our tube wicks. Now, similar to the wooden wicks, these are made out of a very thin piece of wood that's been rolled into like a tube or a straw shape. Um, these are going to give you that unique crackling sound whenever your candles are burning, um, but they're actually designed to work with your cotton wicks. So you wouldn't want to use this uh, just on its own. You're going to need a cotton wick to make sure these are actually burning properly. And all you do is you just uh, slide the tube wick right over your cotton wick just like that and then you can trim it just like a regular cotton wick. Um, 
but you get the nice steady burn from your cotton wick with that fun crackling ambiance that you would get from a wooden wick. Um, now the way that these, uh, the sizing work for these, we only have one size of the tube wicks. Um, our recommendation is to step down one size uh, from whatever wick you're using. So if you're using uh, a wick for a three inch wide container, you're gonna wanna go down just one size from that to make sure you're accounting for the extra heat that you're gonna get from the tube wick. So now I wanna to talk to you about using multiple wicks in your candles. And I wanna answer a few questions as we go through this process. And the first question that I wanna answer is, when do I use more than one wick in my candle? Usually we will recommend multi-wicking your candles once the diameter reaches about three and a half inches wide. And the reason is because the majority of our wicks will top out at about a three to maybe three and a half inch wide diameter. We do have some wicks that can burn up to maybe four or five inches wide. However, uh, we have found that those wicks really have to work hard to reach that full diameter and melt all the wax across the top of your candle. So we have found if you can just size down and use more than one wick, it's gonna give you better results. Okay, so the next thing that we want to answer is going to be, how do I decide what size wick to use? Now on our website, under our Candle Making University, we have a very helpful um, wick guide that has sizing charts for all of the different types of wicks that we carry. One thing uh, that's important to note about this, uh, the wick sizing guide, is that all four, all except for the Eco Series and the wooden wicks, the recommendations that you're going to be seeing there, which are based on the diameter of your container, um, are for base paraffin waxes like the IGI 2281. So if you're using um, a single pour paraffin like the IGI 4630 or any kind of a natural wax like soy, you're going to need to size up two to three sizes from whatever that recommended uh, size is there. And that's just to account for the additives that would be in the single pour paraffins and the, uh, the fact that a lot of natural waxes like soy are going to be more dense, so they take a little bit more heat to burn up properly. So make sure you pay attention to that whenever you're looking at the sizing chart. And again, that goes for all except the Eco Series and the Wooden Wicks. Um, the recommendations for the Eco Series is going to be in soy wax, and the same goes for the Wooden Wicks. There's recommendations for soy, and there's also recommendations for single pour paraffins. So next we need to determine um, how many wicks or how, how, do, how we decide what, what size wick that we're gonna be using. We have a really simple formula that we recommend using for this. And we do also have a helpful article that we will link um, in the description down below. But essentially you're going to take the diameter of your container, divide it by the number of wicks that you wanna use, and then add a quarter of an inch to make sure that the wicks are going to be putting out enough heat to really burn all the way to the outside edges of your candles. Um, that's especially important in like square containers. A lot of times you'll notice that a lot of unmelted wax kind of gets left behind in the corners. So adding that little bit of extra heat really helps um, to reach those far places. So for example, if I had a four inch wide container and I wanted to use uh, two wicks in my container, I would do four divided by two, add uh, a quarter of an inch to give me 2.25 inches. So I would need to find a wick on the wick sizing chart um, that would burn that diameter in whatever wax that I'm using. It's pretty simple. I'm not, you know, always the best at math. So if I can do it, you guys can do it too, I promise. Um, the next thing that I wanna talk about is the placement of your wicks in your containers. Now, there's a few different ways that you can do this. Um, and on the article about multi-wicking that has the formula I just mentioned, there's some visual aids there that are really helpful, um, similar to what I'm gonna show you today. Uh, but it goes all the way up to four wicks in the visual aids that I'm showing, that, I, that we have on that article. Um, but today I'm gonna show you just a few examples um, of some round and square jars and the wick placement that I've used. Uh, so first up for this, uh, this round jar, and this is our 18.2 um, ounce three wick hexagon jar from Libby. Um, 
you can see here I've got the wicks side by side in the very center of the jar and they're just kind of equidistant from each other as well as the outside edges of the container. This is just a very simple and easy way to do two wicks. However, in the same jar, you can also do three wicks. And for these, I've done just kind of a simple triangular pattern and they are equidistant from each other and just centered in the middle of the jar. Now, another way that you can do your square containers is this kind of diagonal uh, setup. So I, instead of having them side by side, like this round jar, I've got them more um, diagonal. I've done this quite a few times and I've had really good luck with it, especially because like I was mentioning before, it helps get those far edges of the, um, the corners of the jar so that it doesn't leave a bunch of leftover unmelted wax there. However, you can do a square jar and a side by side setup, just like I've done in this round one. Um, but I just wanted to show you a couple of different options. And likewise to the round container, you can also do the three wick setup like I showed you before in the triangular pattern. Again, I've just kind of uh, spaced them out equidistant from each other and then centered it in the middle of the jar. I will say I think I've had uh, a little bit better luck with this setup sometimes compared to this, just depending on the diameter of your jar, but this really um, will give you some extra heat to make sure that all of that wax gets burnt up. That's really it for today, guys. The biggest piece of advice that I can give you before we sign off is to test, test, test. I can give you all the recommendations in the world. However, everybody's process is different. Everybody uses different materials. So the most important thing is to just make sure you are test burning in small batches to make sure that everything is working together cohesively. If you change any elements to your candle from the jar, the wick, the fragrance, anything that you're putting into it, we will always recommend to you to make sure that you're test burning on a small scale before you do any sort of mass production. You don't want to make a bunch of candles and then have to uh, remake them all just because one element isn't working right. So make sure you test, test, test. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you have any questions at all, please feel free to put them in the comments down below. Or if you need help a little bit quicker, you can always reach out to our customer service team and they'll be more than happy to answer your questions. We put out new videos every month, so make sure you come back and check the next one. And then don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on any new content. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.